why won't my jaw harp make any noise? That's a question that you're asking yourself right now. Let's take a few minutes to go over some technique-based and harp-based things that might be causing the issue. The first one we're gonna go over is, does your jaw harp look like this? This is the infamous Snoopy harp. It's sometimes sold as a first note mouth harp, hillbilly jaw harp, bluegrass jaw harp, uh, Hobby Lobby mouth harp. Now, this is the Snoopy harp, and it doesn't really make any noise. It really doesn't play. This is not a jaw harp so much as it is a prop, musical instrument toy, or also jaw harp-like object. If you want to see my full review of the Snoopy harp, click the above link. But if your harp looks like this, it's probably not going to work for you. So you're going to want to select a different harp. Now, I am going to include in the description below some links to suggested harps that I suggest for beginners. Now, this is for the beginner first starting off. Let's take a look at a couple good jaw harps and let's go over what the parts are of the jaw harp. First, this outer portion, and we're gonna call this the frame. This inner portion right here that vibrates, we're gonna call that the reed or the tongue of the jaw harp. And here at the tip, this is going to be the trigger, the part you, you pluck. Now, jaw harps can come in many different shapes, sizes. Here's a glazer and wave. Here's the frame the reed or the tongue running right down the middle, and then the trigger. Let's just go over how to hold the harp, because if we can't properly hold the harp, it's not gonna work well for us. Now, I'm gonna go over what I'm gonna call a two or three point grip, and we're gonna wanna grip the instrument. First and foremost, don't touch the reed. If your finger or mouth is touching the reed in any fashion, it can't vibrate. It's like a guitar string, it must be able to vibrate freely, and if we're touching or holding it, or if you're holding it like this, or if your lips are touching the reed, it's not gonna work, so we're gonna wanna hold it in a way that this reed can move freely. I'm gonna call this the two or three point grip. We're gonna grip it with our thumb and our middle finger on the bottom, not touching the reed in the center, and resting our finger in front. You can rest it on top, but I find that to be not as stable as a grip. We're gonna grip it just like this and avoid touching the reed entirely. Your heart might be bigger, it might look like this. We don't want to grab it like this and compress the frame because if we compress the gaps down, it can't play, it's going to click. So we're going to grip it top and bottom like this and it's actually going to rest against the front of the teeth. We're gripping it and we're going to put very, very gentle pressure against the tips of our teeth. Your teeth are not going to go outside of it. They're going to rest up against the tip. If we look at a drawing of this, here would be the heart from the end. And then here would be your teeth. They're going to rest on the outside. Now we want a space in between our teeth. We don't want our teeth closed because that reed has to travel back and forth. If the reed can't vibrate, it's not going to make good sound. Now we have the harp, we have it up against our teeth. We don't wanna create any undue pressure so it's going to rest lightly. We just want enough pressure that the harp itself can't vibrate. So we have the space in between our teeth, just like this. We look at the frame of the harp from the end view. It's going, your teeth are gonna be up against the back portion of the frames, not here or here, but up against the back portion. And we're going to rest that up against your teeth. Now I do find that it helps to practice this your first time in front of a mirror because if you're not in front of a mirror, you don't know exactly how you're plucking, exactly how you're holding the harp. If you play in front of a mirror for the first day or two, you're gonna see a lot of the issues of where, where we're having a technique-based issue and the harp not sounding. Now we have the harp resting against our teeth. Now we're gonna pluck. Now one of the reasons most people get that noise, that clinking noise, is see what's happening with my finger here, either when we pluck backward or we pluck forward. That's a downward angle. If you pluck an upward or downward angle, the reed or trigger itself is gonna twist and it's gonna contact the frame. We don't want that. So when we have our harp here, let's start off by plucking straight backwards or straight forwards because we want a straight line. We don't want this downward angle. Look what happens when I pluck with a downward angle. Now you may see me in a lot of my videos doing this, but if you look, I'm plucking in a straight line and not downward. So we wanna make sure that we're conscientious of not pulling the trigger or reed downward and twisting it. That will cause you an issue 
100% of the time. So we want to get in front of the mirror and pluck straight forward or straight backward. And your heart might be different. It might be bigger. It might have way different sound. So just don't concentrate on grabbing the harp and wailing on it real fast. We just want to get the basics of one pluck, one sound. So grab the harp, make sure we don't touch the, touch the trigger, touch the reed. We don't want it stuffed over so far that it's past the corner of our mouth. We want to hold the harp up to the corner of our mouth and make a space. See, my mouth, there is a little space because this reed has to travel back and forth. We also don't want our tongue resting up against the reed. So, one pluck, one sound. Straight back or straight forward without touching the reed. We don't want to touch it with our thumb. We don't want to touch it with our finger. We don't want to grab it like this. If, we, if we're touching the reed, it doesn't make any sound at all. So that reed has to travel. It has to vibrate. It is kind of like a guitar string. Now, I am going to, now once we get these basic sounds down, we can move forward with how to play the jaw harp. Now I'm going to leave a link up above of how to play the jaw harp, the basic, some basic sounds and basic songs blah, up there. Now, if you are still having issues with your harp after all these, after establishing good grip, establishing a good mounting point up against your teeth, plucking properly, not touching the reed, I'm going to include a link card up above of how to fix your harp or how to diagnose, is it the harp causing me the, the problem? And we're going to leave a link right up there. Now, there is going to be links down in the description to all of these videos. I'm also going to include links of suggested beginner harps. So if you're still having issues, click the link for dropped glasrin fix, and it's going to teach you how to fix a glasrin if you dropped it or if it came damaged in shipping. Anyways, that's going to wrap this video up. Keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that the jaw harp is a wonderful journey for you, and I hope that this video helped. If you're still having issues, leave a comment below, and I'll make a video maybe. Uh, the best videos are from subscriber questions. So anyways, keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. Be good to each other. Harp out. We can't end it with just playing one harp. Let's play something weird.